All right, let's show you how to create some fully procedural rain inside of Blender. So to start off, I'm gonna create a new scene. So first what I wanted to do is add in a plane and I'm gonna give it a geometry node set up. We'll name it something like rain, whatever we want. Next what we can do is we can first off scale this up so that it's just a little bit bigger. And if I add in an instance on points node, we can then instance some geometry in here. Now, we also need a distribute points on faces node so that we uh, kind of have points that get created. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to add in an icosphere, set these subdivisions to two so it's a little bit smoother and plug it into the instances slot of our instance on points. It's gonna create our uh, rain droplets. If I want to, I can add a shade smooth, uh, set shade smooth and we can smooth those edges out to make them look a little bit better. What I also am going to do is I'm going to set this to like 0 0.005 just to make these tiny, tiny little raindrops right here. What we're going to need to do is we are going to need to move these things uh, up and down or down, rain doesn't go up. To do that, we're going to add in a translate, translate instances. So we're going to do that, add that in, and then in order to move these, we need a combine XYZ node. And we can plug the combine XYZ's vector into the translation vector, that way we can control these uh, individual values and right you'll see if we change this z value it goes up and down so what we can do now is we can use a scene time node which uh, allows you to basically change a value based on how many seconds the animation is running or how many frames in you are uh, we're going to plug the seconds into the z value and you'll see that this thing starts flying upward you'll notice it's going backwards so we can add in a math node set to multiply by negative one that way it's now falling. I'm also gonna change the scale of these just so we can see them a little bit better. Now, in order to actually make these things kind of go look like rain a little bit, what we're gonna do is we are going to duplicate our multiply node and we're gonna change it to a uh, truncated modulo node. I'm gonna set it to something like two, maybe one even, and you'll notice it starts over every so often. So if I make sure to set this to a smaller number, you'll see it repeats more often. So that's very good. Next one I'm gonna do, duplicate my modulo. A math node and I'm going to change it to an add node from there let's add in a random value node this is going to allow us to offset the rain randomly make it look like rain and not just a blob of blocks falling so we can do this add in the random value turn the maximum up quite a lot and then you'll see here we go we've got a a little bit of a rain look going on right now so if I add another multiply node we can stretch things out, right? Um, if I set it to a positive value though, it'll stretch things out so that they're moving downward. And uh, you can make your rain move a little bit faster. Now, I'm gonna set mine maybe to like five. And in order to offset this so that it's, uh, you know, not just uh, falling below the character, you can duplicate your math node again, set it to, I believe, add, and keep the exact same value. Now, to make this easy so that the value always changes in sync with that multiply, you can just plug these two values into each other. And then when you stretch this out a little bit, then you get the offset happening while you're stretching out the rain. So now that we have that, what we're going to need, though, however, is first we need a rotate vector. And we can plug that right here. That'll allow us to just kind of rotate the rain. I have it coming from a different direction. Uh, super quick, super easy. And yeah, just uh, adds a little bit of interest to your stuff. What you could also do, by the way, is you could uh, use like vector math and another random value node set to vector, plug it in here. And um, yeah, and then if you plug it into the rotation, then you can kind of set a randomized starting vector. And if you really want to make things a little bit easier, you can do a combine X, Y, Z, grab another value node and plug it into the X and the Y. And then you can set this to like 0.1. So if you really want to randomize the rain pretty easily, like a lot, you can just do something like that. And it'll randomize it in both directions. And then you can use your Z value. And once again, I might just grab another combine X, Y, Z, plug it in up here and set it to only the Z value. And then uh, if you want to get even fancier, you can F2 name everything. And this could be like uh, randomization without the slash because we're not amateurs. What is this? Um, <laughs> Direction. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, this could be um, speed or distance or one of the two. Distance. Height. Height is probably a better one. 
And yeah, there you go. Now we have um, our falling rain. If you want to make it look more like rain, you just click on motion blur, end of frame, turn up the shutter, and yeah, um, that looks terrible right now, but it'll look better, I promise. We need a material for this, so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a set material node. Um, you can do it here, and uh, we're going to add a new material. It doesn't really matter what object we add it to. Open up our shader editor, and I'm just going to use a glass material plugged into the surface. A uh, tiny bit of roughness, IR of 1.333, because that is your uh, your glass IR. Uh, we can name this uh, rain, and then we will choose this as our material. Oh my gosh, what is happening? There we go, and there you go. Now you got some, you got a rain material that uh, works pretty well. If you want to get a little bit fancier, you can add in a transparent texture and add in a Fresnel, then mix these two together. Uh, you're also going to flip your transparent and your Fresnel, or your transparent and your glass shader factor into the factor, your effect, I don't know. just makes it look a little bit better when it's moving quickly like that. So, now that we have that, um, we're going to want to join the geometry of our original mesh and this, uh, this new mesh. So we're going to do that uh, by grabbing our group input adding a join geometry node and plugging it through this translate instances. We can set the material of this one as well if we want um, to something different. I am going to give it a new material which is just a just a street. So we'll add in a street, set it to that, and then um, I'm going to hold control shift T and go find my textures. There's a few of them and yeah there we go. Now we've got a nice street for rain to fall onto. I'm be honest, I don't know what's happening there. Okay, the temporal reproduction was making things crazy. But there we go. As you can see, there's a rain. The randomness makes it a little bit crazy, so play around with that at your own discretion. So as you can see, we've got some good rain going. Um, now let's work on this street material a little bit. So first, if you're enjoying this video and you want to see part two right now, you can head over to my Patreon. The video is going to be uploaded there. Also on the Patreon, the entire node group is going to be available to download. So if you want to get all the rewards without any of the work, you can go over there and download that. Thanks for sticking around and we'll see you in part two.